Hello everyone, I am Dr. K. So you want to become a community chaplain in the Corps. This video will share with you what is needed, the requirements, as you will, uh, of becoming a community chaplain. Let me tell you a little bit about the story of uh, the NUMA Center and the American Community Chaplain Corps. The American Community Chaplain Corps, also called AC3, is a division and association of the NUMA or Spirit Center, which is a 501c3 uh, nonprofit uh, organization, religious, educational, and charitable organization, is recognized by the Internal uh, Revenue Service. Uh, what this means is that uh, we can get contributions from across the country and give people. Um, I guess tax credit for their contributions that they give. The Newman Center uh, started some years ago, actually 20 years ago, when my wife and I, uh, Pastor Michelle McClendon McGee, had the first of five babies uh, lost to miscarriage. Although I was a minister at the time, my wife was not. Um, I was in seminary, but I realized that many people did not know how to give care. Uh, I also was in the military, did not get much support and care, even with the military. And even with people who were PhDs in pastoral care and other PhD people at the seminary that I went to, really was not uh, provided the type of care that is necessary in order to deal with a traumatic event like the death or miscarriage of a child. And so 20 years ago, the idea was birthed in me uh, to start an organization that provided care across the continuum of care to those who may need it. And I say anyone who may need the care but especially military, veterans, uh, first responders, and their family. And so the idea was birth. So I started doing research, been doing research for 20 years. Um, and in 2005, I was deployed to uh, Balad, Iraq. I was the installation chaplain at LSA Anaconda on Balad, Iraq. And from the time I left to go on deployment to the time I came back, uh, I lost nine people close to me and really did not know how to handle all of these deaths uh, that were coming at me. Had much training because I've been in the military now 30 years but really the training did not provide for me the tools necessary in order to be successful um, in the civilian world or in the military world to care for even for myself. So the idea came up. But on August um, the 4th, 2006, I got a call from my wife, uh, Pastor Michelle, and she informed me that my mother, Florence Reams McGee, uh, had died in a rollover car accident on the way to a family reunion in Texas. And so obviously that was devastating news. My mom was like my best friend um, since I'd been in the military. All of those years, I really contacted her uh, every week, many times during the week uh, for all those years of me being in the military. And uh, I began to try to put my head around, uh, pro you know, providing the care to my family during that uh, time of, of, of loss for, for us. I ended up burying my uh, mother on her birthday, August 12th, 2006, which is also the only, uh, the, 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 the date uh, of our only child Christian Xavier McClendon McGee. So her uh, funeral was the day of her birth and also our only surviving son, Christian Xavier McClendon McGee. And as I said before, we lost five babies to miscarriage uh, beginning in uh, 1993. 
prior to me going on deployment, my mother had asked me to uh, sit down with her to know where all the important documents were. And I refused to talk to her about it. I didn't want to deal with her death. And so because of that, uh, I had a little bit of guilt about what I did not do. And I had to eventually uh, be the executor of her estate and take care of many of the business affairs of her estate. And so my mother is the one who really brought to fruition uh, the NUMA Center and the American Community Chaplain Corps um, because I had to do it. And the way I memorialized her was to begin this not-for-profit and I did that in uh, 2007 after her, her death. So this is very important information. You will not find this information nowhere uh, in the world that I know of and I've been researching for 20 years. It's very unique, it's very thorough, it's very comprehensive. So this is uh, the curriculum uh, of what is needed for you. Um, let me tell you, number one, the requirements are to become a board certified community chaplain is to be recommended um, by an organization, religious or secular, ministry, not-for-profit or business. Uh, you need to also have three personal references in order to be uh, part of this program. You need to, number three, purchase and complete all three levels, or all three phases of the training. The cost are uh, $99 per phase or $297 complete and $125 uh, for all the materials, which adds up to be $422. You uh, also need to have a background check. And uh, again, that was number four, be recommended. Uh, have three personal references. Number three, um, have purchase and complete all three levels of phases of training. And then number four, to have a background check. What are the benefits of going through and becoming a board certified community chaplain? Uh, to be a better care provider to uh, yourself, to your family, to your friends, to your company, business organization, not-for-profit, etc. cetera. Um, to assist your uh, organization, business, not-for-profit or, or business, to have those in your particular business organization company. Uh, number three, to have your own ministry or what I like to call as your private practice. Number four, to be in a network of community chaplains around the country and we are hoping to be uh, connected around the world and then number five to have ongoing support and supervision as we as a core that's what i'm calling uh, ac3 the american community chaplain core uh, a core try to provide care which is not provided as i am talking about it to people around the world, regardless of race, class, even religion. Um, you say, how could you do that regardless of religion? Well, the American Community Chaplain Corps as a division and association of the NUMA Center is a trans-denominational organization, which means we go beyond your religion to provide what I call spiritual health care and chaplain service, meaning the services and the care that we provide is universal. It is for all people, okay? Regardless of that, we take care of the human spirit. I wrote a book called uh, Pneumatology, The Holistic Science of the Human Spirit, and that is what we are trying to do is take care of the spiritual aspect of uh, health care and do it in a systematic fashion so that in working with others, whether it's mental health, and I'm also trained as a mental health provider, or the medical doctors, we can provide holistic care to make sure you get the best care necessary in order to be uh, made whole again. So it is a take-home study that you, by having the app or going on to the website or the mobile website, 
you can get all the information you need you can call me if you need to do so and um, you can pay the monies for the training and I will send it to you and you can go through the training in your own home but I'm available and others will be available to help you get through um, the process well let me tell you about the three phases of training in uh, the training that we have level one two and three or three phases one two and three we have three courses per each phase so there's a total of nine courses that make up the complete training in level one you have pneumatology 101 which is the introduction to spiritual care number two you have world religions and human spirituality number three you have thanatology the study of death and dying in level two you have pneumatology 201 which is interventions in spiritual care uh, number two, you have ethics, the facilitation to do the right thing. And number three, you have speaking and worship in a pluralistic environment. In level three, you have pneumatology 301 or long-term spiritual care. Uh, number two, you have gerontology. This is the study of aging and the aged. And number three, you have administration, which is the heart of of community uh, chaplaincy. Let me go on to say that uh, this training is for lay or clergy and we believe that it will probably be a uh, more dominated uh, in with lay because most pastors, uh, and I know clergy is different than pastors, pastors uh, a person over a congregation um, is too, are too busy to do this. But if clergy who are not the pastor, I think would be great for them, but it's especially for lay. This training is very in-depth, is very comprehensive. It is probably, without being braggadocious, the best in-depth training for being a chaplain, um, again, a community chaplain, that you've ever seen. One uh, older person, and his name is, is, is Mr. Chapel, lives in Jefferson City, Missouri, said this is the best tra uh, training that he's ever had of any type uh, in his life. And I think Mr. Chapel is, is over 80, and he thoroughly enjoyed the training of becoming a community chaplain. So hopefully you would uh, make the decision and commitment to be a community chaplain. You would do all the things necessary as given to you. Uh, to uh, become a community chaplain and you would join the core. If you have a additional question, you can call me um, and it's on the app, it's on the website. You can go to uh, the mobile website. Another website is www.thespiritcenter.org and you can find all the information. But we want to uh, have a core of community chaplains in AC3, the American Community Chaplain Corps, that will take care of people wherever they are. You are to be the chaplain in your community, whether that's being with a police department or a fire department or a veteran's home or whatever the case may be. We want you to be a community chaplain. And one way that we're getting the word out is through the Dr. K.L. McGee, M-C-G-H-E-E -E, app, and those, whether they go to church or not, mosque, temple, synagogue or not, we want to provide care, spiritual health care and chaplain services to anyone uh, in this country, but all, uh, also across the world. This is uh, a, a ministry that I'm very passionate about, and if you are uh, to be so bold to accept this mission, then you will not be disappointed. Well, I am Dr. K. Luella McGee. This has been an introduction to what it takes to become a community chaplain in the AC3 Corps, the American Community Chaplain Corps. We look forward to working with you and be blessed on today.